and move over here. <laughs> That's a little bit better. Move this across here. There you go. Now you can see me a little bit better. And for that, I'm sorry. Well, you have to look at this face for the next, uh, you know, however long game will be. All right. Awesomeness. Great deal. So we are up and running the, uh, let's see, my hair. My hair. Need a little work on my hair. It's one of those mornings where I get up and I'm like, you know what? I'm just, I'm going. I'm going for it, people. I'm ready to rock and roll. So. Come on in, folks, because today we're going to be doing the Mind Scrambler podcast. Uh, make sure it is streaming. Let me look on. Let's see. I move this around here. There we go. Yep, that's me. Beautiful. I'm on. I'm live. It's happening. It's happening now, people. It is happening right now. So, tell you where I am in the process. So, I was going to um, have the new studio up. And yes, this is my makeshift uh, voiceover studio where I am now. It ain't the prettiest, but then again, that's okay. It does what it needs to do. I sound good, and that's the main thing that we need to deal with. So, um, Jimmy Ricardo, how are ya? Good eye. Good eye, good eye, good eye, good eye. Hey, all things Dan under. I'm assuming you're down under. I think you are. I hope uh, you are safe and sound. As is all your friends and animals. <clears throat> So, um, yeah, anyway, so here's where we are. I am still in this booth for a little bit because, I mean, this is where I do all my recording anyway. So if there's any voiceover going on, I mean, obviously, it doesn't look that great, but who gives a crap? You know, it's all about the voice. Um, but obviously, you can see me, so I should have concern about that. I don't because it really doesn't matter. I could be, you know, broadcasting out of a box. The information I'm going to give you is uh, freaking amazing anyway. So we're all good with that. But uh, the new studio, we're going to get that up and running, and uh, we're very close to that. We've got uh, <laughs> cable guys came out, and they're like, uh, yeah, well, we can we can do this. Uh, we have to run it because we've got a separate garage. So they're like, they can't do conduit or any of that. It's like, oh, well, we can just run, you know, run the cable from there and over there. I'm like, yeah, and as soon as it gets heated up by the sun, that cable is going to be drooping down, and it's going to look ridiculous. <clears throat> so there was really no way they could work with it. Except now we got to get a guy. Um, <coughs> excuse me, still got that dry cough that's been going around. They've got the guy who um, is going to come over, and they're going to run. So he's going to run the line, but our guy has to drill under into concrete, under the concrete, and then up on the other side. And so he's got to run a conduit there. So then they can run the line all the way through, do the conduit under there, and then into the garage, and then we'll be good to go. And then I will set up the studio there. And uh, I have lights, and um, I'm going to be putting backdrop, and you'll see my books and stuff like that. So it'll, it'll be a nice little setup. And that way I can start doing uh, more trainings, more vo video trainings for food game or you know real estate or voice or whatever it is. Uh, I can help you with some trainings there. And so that would be awesome. Uh, Adelaide is fairly safe. Good, good, good. Good. We love Adelaide. So there you go. That's what's happening, guys. Oh, that is some good coffee. Started my day off right. Had a little light workout, not a not a big one, nothing big. I didn't have much much time, but got the blood pumping, got some of the the muscles a rolling a little bit. I'll do more workout later on today, I'm sure, because I've got to go back to the studio today from three to seven. So did four hours yesterday, and that's usually the longest stint in voiceover you're going to do is about four hours, and uh, that gets pretty taxing. I mean, I used to do like I'll do eight hours, and uh, you're just you just beat after eight hours. So four hours is usually the norm uh, for the longest you're going to do in a uh, voice work. Um, and this one, it's interesting. I can't say anything about the titles or any of that, but it's uh, a project. It's a live action project for uh, Netflix. So, you know, Netflix is, is just basically taking over the freaking world. And, um, you know, they are just... 
they're just, I mean, they're getting everything. Everything that's coming out of Netflix is just, here's a series, here's a series, here's a series. You know, it's it's in China or it's Russian or German or whatever it is. And then just, we just dub, 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 go, 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 go. And uh, so, I mean, it's it's cool. You know, you get some work, but it's also like, you know, eh, I don't know. I'm not sure, you know, dubbing live action. It's not something I can hang my hat on and say, hey, you know, it's called localization dubbing. And it's it does not pay that well, and it's not going to help me in my voiceover career. So it's not something I can, you know, I don't want to get out there and say, hey, look at what all I've, all I've done. It's like, no, that doesn't really help me. Red Nova Tyrant, how are you, my friend? Good to see you. So, glad y'all have joined me today. We're going to have a great podcast today. Um, I've got some good stuff to talk about and uh, some really good reframes uh, for how you're looking at things, how you're looking at your life. So we're going to really get into that uh, in a little bit here. But for now, it's a hello, hello, hello. How are you? Can you see me and hear me fine? I think I've got everything lined up right. I've got a really good microphone. I've got my uh, HD 920 thing here. Don't we have a great podcast every day? Well, yes, we do. Well, not every day, but every day I'm on. So, yes, yes, it is a good day for a podcasting. And, oh, man. So, things have been happening. It's been interesting. I've been working on my mindset, uh, working with my subconscious mind, and really, um, reworking how I'm viewing things. And I've got some some pretty hefty problems that uh, I have to deal with. And I don't want to bring you guys into it all, but it, but they are, they're very large, incredibly large, actually. Some people would be like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Um, and I'm really looking to my subconscious mind to fix these things <clears throat> because it's also called manifesting. And, um, you know, when you manifest something, for example, I manifest a parking space. I live, you know, in Los Angeles. I lived in Koreatown, so I was like right outside of downtown. And I said, I will manifest. I I manifest a parking space. I always have a parking space. And when we go, like, just we went over the other night. Like I was telling you guys, we went to uh, for my birthday, and we're like, we're on Ventura Boulevard, Sherman Oaks, on a you know weekend. You're like, you kidding me? You're not going to find parking. I mean, you're going to have to valet somewhere. And I'm like, no, no, we got parking. So I dropped everybody off, went around the block a couple times, so doop, 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 boop, literally one block away. I parked right on the street and crossed the street, and boom, I was right there. Perfect. Um, and that happens anywhere, everywhere, always. And that's just a given in my life. I manifest. It's not saying I expect it, but I do. That's a whole. Th- I'm going to do a whole thing on expectation because that's, that's going to blow your mind. Um, but I say that's what I have. And I've manifested things in the past um, and understand we manifest everything, the good and the bad in our lives. <clears throat> we are manifesting machines, and most people just don't understand that. They don't know how to work with that, and I'm a student of it, so I'm not a master in any way. I'm, gonna, I'm going to be. I'm going to master this. I'm going to get to where I can manifest any and everything that I want. Uh, avalanches of abundance, of money, um, happiness. Happiness you can manifest always. That's you. That's, happiness is totally up to you. Whoa, did I just rubber band? Did that happen? Or I don't know what's happening on the uh, video over there. It looked like I just went. That's freaky, man. Yeah. So anyway, so that's like manifesting. And I've been working on that. And it's like, for example, this role that I'm doing right now, it came to me. There was, uh, you know, I was like, <clears throat> I I have the um, I I have abundant success in voiceover, real estate, uh, speaking, coaching, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I have certain uh, aff- affirmations that I work with for those. And I get into a state of relaxation, very very relaxed, self hypnosis type thing. And you know, and that's when I work with my subconscious mind. And uh, suddenly, out of nowhere, I get this email. And it's like, hey, you know, I'm doing this this project. Here's the here's the numbers and everything. You know, you are you interested in doing that? And I just texted, you bet, I'm interested in doing that. Sure, you know, I've worked with you before. Let's do that. And he says, great, because you're the lead, and I need you for eight hours. I'm like, what? I didn't even audition. So that's the way things happen when you get on the right 
vibration on the right manifestation, you know, tack. You might hear my, my baby boy out there. He's getting changed in the other room there. Um, but when you get your, you know, it's literally, it's a frequency. It's a vibration. We are all energy. Um, and I'm learning that more and more. And it's not this woo-woo thing. This is like, this is science now. They've got it figured out. This is uh, quantum, quantum physics and quantum, all this stuff, neuroscience. And I love it. I mean, I'm, I'm learning more and more every day. It's like, holy moly, we really have so much power over everything that we are and do and can be and want. So when you really look at it, at the power of your brain and what you can do, it's phenomenal. And most of us don't tap into that. I mean, look, 99.9999999999999% of the people in the world do not tap into that. A lot of your people that are, you know, highly successful do. Um, not all of them. I mean, some of them have their own karma and dharma and all that junk that uh, is going to come back and bite them in the butt. But most, mostly if you're an enlightened, like the enlightened millionaires, enlightened successful people, um, it's, it's beautiful. It's wonderful. Like, they want to help others. I want to help others. It's been like my calling... That can you hear him? That's, that's the cutest kid. Um, but it's like my job is the thing that really gets me going. Like this, this, this podcast, this, you know, talking with you guys. I'm basically doing it for free. People are like, well, if you really do what you love, you know, what would you do for free? I'm like this. I like to talk. I like to expand minds. I like to share information. You know, I like to coach. I like to teach. Always have. And even though. You know, I've been in voiceover and acting and everything. I, I teach acting classes at business side. Uh, I just taught a voice business side um, of networking and communication <clears throat> in Houston when I was down there. It's like, I don't teach people really how to use their voice that much. I can. I can give you the basics. So if you're starting out, I can totally, you know, you can rock it out. But, um, you know, there's so many people teaching. And I, I've worked with them. I have coaches. I've had voice coaches. Uh, so I still got another lesson I got to go with uh, a gentleman. So, you know, if you've got somebody that, uh, if you are coach, if, if you've got somebody who you want to possibly coach you in something, make sure they have a coach. I have a lot. <laughs> I have several. Uh, let's see. I've been taking notes. Good. Got to go to the library and check out a heap of books you've recommended. Well, I got more for you. I always have more for you. Here's what I'm going to do um, as I'm learning uh, how Twitch works. Uh, I'm going to have a button. Uh, it's got, called Stuff I Like, uh, and I think it's going to connect to an Amazon page. And everything that I like will be there. All the books that I recommend, uh, any of like the videos or shows that I'm in, you can just go there and, and buy it, and it'll be, be yours. Um, at the end of Food Game, I give you a book list of you know dating and relationship stuff there, and that's a really good uh, source. So if you have that book, then check that out. Uh, and if you've bought the book, please go back to Amazon and uh, leave me a, a five-star review, glowing. Like, man, this guy knows what he's talking about. Have you seen his hot wife who's 19 years younger than him? Wow, this guy understands dating. Because <laughs> I do. Um, okay, guys, it is 9.15. It is time for me to start my podcast. So uh, if you guys are ready, let's uh, knock this out. And as I've told you, I have named it the Mind Scrambler podcast. I'm working on graphics and uh, all that stuff now. It will maintain the same color scheme that I have below. And if you guys have noticed, I've got sort of that cartoon vibe. And if you notice the color scheme, it's Iron Man. Pretty freaking cool. So I'm going to stick with that color theme and all that. And it's over on my YouTube uh, as well. The banner there is, uh, but it's Relationship Sales Dynamics, which is the the thing that I teach, but I'm going to change that to the Mind Scrambler because um, that's just a better name and it's just more fun for what I, what I actually do because I'm going to scramble your brain, people. All right, let's get started. Let me boop, 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 do get my list out of things I'm going to talk about. There we go. All right. Here we go, people. It is podcast time. Let me get coffee. I have drink, yes? Okay. Ah, this is my mug from when I was teaching uh, VO, the wild ride. I was the head coach with my friend who was running in the show. <clears throat> it was awesome. Okay. Here we go, people. 
Hello, 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 and welcome to the Mind Scrambler podcast. I am Spike Spencer, your hostish with the mostish. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. So, what are we doing today? Well, I wanted to bring you in and talk to you about something uh, about viewpoints, and I titled it, Hey, what are you looking at? So, what are you looking at? That's what we're going to talk about today, uh, because how you look at things matters immensely. Uh, in your life, in your relationships, in everything that you do, that matters. I did another one before on you know looking at things from a different angle. Well, this one's going to be a little bit different on that one because what I'm going to talk about um, is more than just viewpoint. Viewpoint is uh, definitely important, but let me talk to you right now. The first tenet of what are you looking at is: Are you looking at your life through a filter? of the past, the present, or the future. Now think about that for a second. Let me run this down for you. The past is over. The past has happened. Everything I just said, gone. That's the past. The present is right now. As it's happening, it is active. If you are in the present moment, then you are, as we say, present. If you are thinking about the future... You are also not in the present. You are worried about something in the future. I'm going to go over that in a minute because worrying is just ridiculous. Um, So if you're not living in the present, if you're in the past or the future, then you are not focused. You are not in the correct position. Your viewpoint, what you are looking at, is false. Now, (coughs) excuse me, goodness, coughing. I guess I'll have to edit that out. So if you're looking at the past, if you're living life through a filter of the past, if you're looking at things that you did, or regrets, or shame, or guilt, or anger, or sadness, or anything that you have there, you're basically carrying a boulder attached to a harness wrapped around your heart, and you're trying to move forward. And the more attention, the more you look at your past as... A problem or an issue and something that brings up emotions that are negative to you, the heavier that boulder gets. That's why people have issues moving forward in their life and their relationships. Or they get into a relationship, and whether it be business or personal, and then all this junk starts to come up in their relationship. And it's like the same old pattern. And then they wreck that relationship. If you know anybody that's been married once, twice, three times, or more, you look at back at their relationships and you go, well, what did you do? Well, the first time around, I did this. But I learned so much. Really, did you? Because the second time, you did the same damn thing. And they say, well, <clears throat> the second time, I really learned so much. Really? Because this third time, you did the same damn thing. What is going on? You're not learning the lessons. You're carrying around the boulder. So if you carry around that boulder with you, with all this regret, all this shame, all the guilt, etc., etc., then you cannot move forward in a new relationship. If you've ever heard somebody say, um, I'll give you a prime example. So my friend, who is a, a woman who we I knew for, gosh, about seven years, and she was like my sister. Uh, and um, when I was alone, I, basically every day I would be going over to her house. We'd hang out. We'd drink wine and talk. Nothing ever happened, just like my sister. But she was a very, very big female force, an energy in my life. She was also a psychic. And I adore her and love her. But she moved away, so we haven't really kept close. But one of the reasons why she left at least you know, the relationship with me, and she told my wife this later... She said, I had to remove myself from the equation because my energy was blocking him having someone like you come into our life. So because she was my sounding board, I was bouncing off all of my old pain, all of my old hurts and shame. That boulder was stuck on me, and I could not have somebody else. So you have to move certain things to make room for something else. That's why things like Marie Kondo, the... um, uh, you know, the woman who does all of the, uh, you know, get rid of everything, storage and clean out your closets and simplify your life, etc. That's incredibly valuable. 
Because when you do that, you make room for other things. If you've got too much clutter, there's, too, there's no room for anything else. And that's even in your physical world. Think about it that way. If your desk is incredibly cluttered, you may know where everything is, but it's incredibly cluttered. So it's hard to get more things in like success, like uh, better methods of doing a business, you know, to streamline or getting help. There's so many things that are impediments because we are looking at them through the prism of the past. So getting past your past is incredibly important. And that is going to be another podcast about uh, forgiveness and moving on and getting rid of that stuff. You have to clear. That's the first tenet of my relationship sales dynamics is clear. It's clear, connect, close. And the clearing part is not just being clear on what you want and what you're looking at. That's the viewpoint I'm talking about. Are you looking at the right things? But the clear is also clearing out the past. So if you clear all that junk from the past, you cut the ties to that boulder that you've got wrapped around your heart that you've been dragging, suddenly you're free to run. You're light. You're airy. You're happy. You're like, wow, I am free. And I've seen this happen. It's happened for me as well, uh, utilizing something called timeline therapy with uh, neurolinguistic programming. Um, it's being used in PTSD, etc. And I am licensed to practice it. And the thing is, um, I do that in my my very large coaching package. That's the one, the transformational coaching package. Um, and it's it's amazing what you can do when you cut ties. There's also something very simple that I will recommend to do um, to cut ties with your past. Very simple. And it's actually ancient Hawaiian. It was taught to me by my uh, NLP coaches. And it's called a Hoa Pono Pono. That's Hoa Pono Pono. <laughs> what this is, it's a th- uh, it's a four-step process. It's very, very simple. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to get it right because I don't have it in front of me and I haven't done it in a while. I really need to, personally, actually. Um, but what you'll do is, well, look it up online so that it's done exactly correctly. But um, what you'll do is you'll bring people up in your mind's eye on a stage in front of you. And you can you can do this with one person. You can do this with everybody. You can do this every day. doesn't matter. Because the reason why this works is we are all tethered by energetic cords. They're invisible, but it is you're still tethered to somebody. Uh, and you make new tetherings every day, every communication you get. Every time you're on Facebook and you see somebody's post, boom, you were tethered. You know, every little thing, you are tethered, tethered, tethered. So by the end of the day, you are tethered with so many things. It's like, man, this is really rough. So you want to clear that out, mentally clearing. Um, and the way that works is you bring them up on stage in front of you in your mind's eye and you say, I believe it is, um, um, you, th- you imagine a light coming through you and to them and you say, um, I love you. I think that's the last one. You say, um, I think it's, I'm sorry. Thank you. Please forgive me. I love you. It may not be in that exact order. Some people do it different orders. I don't know. But I think those are the four things that you say, regardless of how you feel about this person. You say those things, and you can say them out loud. You can say them in your mind. And once you say these things, you can cut that cord in your mind. You cut the cord. However you want. You can scissors or you know, dynamite it. I don't know. I have a samurai sword that I use. Oh, it's very cool. You know, it's very dramatic. Um, And those cords are mentally cut, and you are free. And then you're going to go and make more cords later on. So you can do this with people that you know and love. I do this with my wife. It's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. It just cuts the cords of the past, and then you develop new cords, stronger cords, better cords, things like that you want to have in your life. That's a quick way to sever ties with your past because the mind, understand this, the mind does not know the difference between something real and vividly imagined. That's why most of the things that we remember never happened. That has been found and proven over and over again that people remember things that never, ever happened. But they would, like, vividly. And we all do that. You know, we'll, you'll, you'll think something, it's like, well, this is exactly how it happened. They're like, no, no, that's not how it happened. Not at all. Here's the video. And you go, whoa, wait, what? So your past is a lot of times just being built up by what you think you remember. 
So getting rid of the past is a huge, huge um, step towards moving forward in your life. And that's why I want to say, are you looking at your past? What are you looking at, your past? Stop, nothing to see here, pal. Nothing to see here. Move along. So stop looking at your past. And if you need help getting out of that, moving forward, there are a lot of ways to do that. Start studying, start looking, start reading these books that I'm telling you to read. Um, they will help you move past your past. Now, the future. I'm going to talk about the future for a second. Now, people will think about the future, and a lot of times they associate goals with the future. And that's that can be a good thing. And I had a whole uh, podcast on goals before. We discussed about how to set SMART goals um, that will really, really resonate with you. And I forgot, I just totally went up on what the S-M-A-R-T is. It measurable, um, re realistic, timed, uh, what does the S stand for again? Man, my brain just went kaput. That's fine, but it doesn't matter because the way you set goals, most people set these huge goals that they never achieve, right? Um, and the reason why is, well, timing, number one, but also expectation and worry. Worry is basically you're worrying about a future that has never happened, that has not happened, that may not happen at all. And I think it was in Fantastic Beasts, there was a great line, she said, you know, when you worry, you just suffer twice. That's if it happens. So if you're worrying about something bad that could happen, and you worry, and you worry, and you worry, you're suffering every day. And then when it finally does happen, then you really suffer. But you've already suffered in your mind. So stop suffering. You know, you have to stop worrying about things. And the way to stop worrying about things is you have to have faith. You have to have faith that it is going to work out exactly how it needs to work out, no matter what, for good or bad. If you don't do something correctly, if you, you know, if you quote unquote fail, you didn't fail, you learned a lesson. And that's something to think about because let's say you have um, you owe a lot of money. And you're like, man, if I cannot pay this, if I cannot pay this, if I cannot pay this, then this is going to happen. And this is going to happen. This is going to happen. If I cannot pay this, then this is going to happen. You keep saying that to yourself every day. Probably 95% 90, of the things that you say to yourself every day is the same stuff as yesterday. It's a cycle that you get into. And if you're saying that, your subconscious mind's going, okay. If you can't make that bill, all it's going to hear is you can't make that bill, you can't make that bill, you can't pay that bill. And then it's like, wow, then I'm going to be in trouble. Well, now you're in trouble because you've been thinking that all, the, all along. You have to think something different. You have to think and you have to do this. Um, it's like an exercise. You have to do this every day. You have to work on it until it is a habit. So your habit becomes a positive marker. Your habit is things are going to go great. This is going to work out perfectly. Everything is going to work out exactly the way it needs to work out in the way it needs to work out at the right time for me and for everyone involved. Can't get more general and positive than that. If you think that for your future, then you free yourself from that future and you can be present. See, I have some huge things in the future I could sit here all day long and worry about. Believe me. I could sit here all day long and worry about, but I don't. Why? Because there's nothing I can do about it. It's the future. I'm not there yet. When something happens, I have to trust that me and my subconscious mind are going to use every tool that we have in this world to do the best we can at that moment for that time, for that situation. And that's the best I can do, right? That is the best I can do. And I know I will do the best I can do. So therefore, why worry? about any of it because I will do the best I can at the time with what I have. So I already know that going in. I have faith and my subconscious mind. I'm already telling it. I was like, hey, you know what? Whenever something happens like this, we're going we're gonna to take everything that we know, everything that we know in our life, and we are going to utilize that to have the best outcome for everybody involved. And that's in the future. So that can pertain to anything and everything. So why worry? There's no reason to worry anymore. So I can stay in the present. Now, Let's talk about the present for a minute. The present is an ongoing transition. It's like, have you seen the, um, I guess it's called gallery, if on the, the pictures there, 
you have uh, the the pictures that you can kind of scroll through, and they just go. They, like the one picture comes and gets real, real big, and then goes this way. It's like that is constantly going, and the present is just right there, right there, right there. You just got this tiny little window. The present is right now. There's a great book, the uh, the power of now, uh, Eckhart Tolle. And he talks about if you are in the present, even if you're in a bad situation, if there's terrible things going on, you have to think about being in that present moment. Yes, there's suffering. Yes, there's lots of things we can go on to. But you're in that present moment. There's, You're there. I mean, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, whoever did it, whoever you know needs this or whoever caused this or whose problem or fault this was, it doesn't matter because that's where you are. Now, <coughs> excuse me. When you are there and being fully present, that means like, for example, if you're at a party, if you're talking to somebody and you're looking right at them and you're really focused on them. And have you ever been at a party, you're talking to somebody and they're like, yeah, okay. And they look away. They look over there and they're like, they're kind of paying attention to you, but they're looking for the next person they're going to talk to. They're like, oh yeah, you're really great. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Tell me more about that. And, but they're looking over there and they're waiting to move. Um, and that's disrespectful to the person that you're talking to, number one, but that also lets them know you're not in the present, you're in the future. You're trying to get away. They can see that, and it's an energy that they feel. One of the things that uh, Bill Clinton, President Bill Clinton had, and everyone said, said he was so present with you that he felt like you, you felt like he was your best friend, that he knew everything about you and wanted to know everything about you, and he was just so attentive to you that it was just amazing. And he's also highly trained in LP, by the way, uh, as most politicians get some, some pretty deep training. And it's really interesting when, when you look at that and you, you put some, it, it doesn't matter good or bad. This is the point. He's very present in that moment. He's right there and he's looking at you and he's talking to you. And once he's done, it's like, excuse me, I do have to go this way. But he doesn't leave. Until that. And there's another little trick. This is a dating trick. It's called sticky eyes. So watch my eyes. So whenever I'm going, it's like, okay, well, thank you so much. It's been wonderful to talk to you. That little second where I kept looking at you as I move. Sticky eyes. That's a little trick, guys. Check it out. Anyway, but that's a connection thing. It's like, man, I really, I have to go, but I don't want to go. Boom. And then you move. It's a cool little, little trick. But that is what I'm talking about by being in the present. Focus on where you are right now. Feel your body. Feel your breath. Feel the air around you. When you find yourself feeling really good in that moment, there's a a peace, a happiness. Like right now, I'm very happy because I'm here with you. I am happy because I'm sharing ideas. I am in a space where my heart is, is full and happy. I think it's cool, you know? And... I like to do that. I want to bring happiness and inspiration to millions, and I will. I am. I am in the process of that right now. Now, I couldn't think, well, gosh, what if nobody ever hears me? I don't know. That's the future. But I have faith, and I believe that my message is going to resonate, and it is going to spread out there. I have too many coaches and teachers and people that I've followed over the years who've been doing this a very, very long time with really, really solid messages, and they're doing absolutely phenomenal in their lives. And I... I know that they're doing well because they have that in their heart. They're like, I really like doing this. I really like to share these ideas. I do this at parties when I'm talking to somebody and they want to say, they ask me questions. I'm like, oh, okay, let me, let me tell you about this. Ho'oponopono or, you know, timeline therapy or, you know, here's this way of looking at it, the past, the future, the blah, 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 you know, it's, um, it's exciting for me and I do like it and I'm in the present right now. I'm with you guys. I'm not trying to get out of here to do something else. All right. So what are you looking at? The past, the future, or now? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Now, a little something else about uh, viewpoint, about what you're looking at, is understanding other people's viewpoint. What are you looking at? Hey, what are you looking at over there? That person who's doing whatever they're doing, you have a viewpoint. You're looking at what they're doing, but you don't know their viewpoint. You don't know why they're doing that. Are they living in the past? Are they living in the future? Ooh, this is where it gets good. See, people in your relationships that you know, people in your family, you have to ask yourself, are they living in the past? 
or the future or now. I'll guarantee you most of them are living in the past with hits of the future that are worrisome. And you listen to how they speak. You know, you'll find that a lot of people are going off of past hurt, pain, uh, whatever it is. And they are firmly ensconced in the past. So this gives you a little bit better idea of how people are putting together their ideas, how they're reacting on a, a daily level. And you can now have some wisdom and some EQ or emotional intelligence in dealing with them. When you know it, when you see it, and you're like, hey, you know, you need to let that go. And that, which, by the way, is sometimes a triggering thing. You say, well, you got to let that go. People just kind of throw it away. Well, let it go. Like, that's easy. No, it's not easy. But they know they need to let it go. And they don't have the tools. So if you have some tools or like a book to recommend or something constructive, you can help them if you know they're living in the past. You know, if you get into coaching like I'm, I can kind of watch it and see what they're doing. You can ask them questions and say, hmm, well, why do you see that that way? What is it about this? My wife is phenomenal at doing this. And she will give reframes to people and she will make them cry. And because they just, they have this release and they're like, oh my God, I never thought about it that way. And it's like, boom, oh, you know, you open up a door. Like recently I had an epiphany um, and I'll share this with you. I, so I played tennis when I was a child and uh, I was ranked uh, 11, uh, 11th in the state of Oklahoma when I was, I think 13, uh, 12 or 13. And um, I wanted to go to Wimbledon. I wanted to be a professional tennis player and I could have been good. You know, I was at that right moment where if I had the training, um, I could have gone, you know, forward with it. But we didn't have a lot of money. And so my dad was my coach, which didn't work out all that well because I didn't respect my dad um, for different reasons. Um, and but he loved to coach as well. And he was a good coach for what we were doing. But I realized that then uh, my parents got divorced because uh, my dad was also a landman, which is an oil lease broker. Uh, he signs pe leases for people's uh, property so that the oil companies could drill on their land and hopefully you know, hit and make everybody a lot of money. Um, but the oil glut in the early 80s went, just wrecked everything, and we lost our home, we lost everything, and uh, my parents uh, divorced. And I was 13, and I moved to Houston. And I blamed them in the past, and I didn't realize how much I blamed them and money for uh, destroying my dream. And I had that epiphany. I was like, whoa, I've been living in this past, that I've been blaming money. I've been blaming that. I've been blaming them all this time. And I started to cry because it just released. And I was like, oh, my gosh, it wasn't the money. It was the mindset that screwed us up, you know, because your mindset has been given to you by others. Understand that. So if you're living in the past, people have been reinforcing that. If you're living in the future, well, you need to worry about that. You don't need to worry about crap, you know. People are reinforcing that. Things are put in your head, plus these things that you put in your head every day, especially if you're watching TV or uh, radio. Stop all that, by the way. Um, and you have to understand what you're looking at from that standpoint. Who's putting this in your brain? Are you looking at the future? Are you worrying? Are you looking at the past? Are you upset, angry, full of remorse? So clear those things out because you don't know how heavy that is on you. And you don't know how heavy that is on other people who are going through the same thing. So remember, always remember this. If you feel it, other people do too. If I feel tension on something, other people know and, and have felt that the same way. It's not like everybody's having a great time, like on Facebook. Everybody's so grateful. Hashtag grateful. Hashtag amazing. Hashtag I love my life. You know, and then there's other people going, well, you know, I'm struggling over here. and I'm tired of people saying, you know, hashtag grateful. What am I supposed to be grateful for? Well, I can get into that for a whole other session, but we have so much to be grateful for. And comparison is a disease. Comparison is a bad, bad thing. So when you see other people doing this, you don't know what their viewpoint is. You don't know what they're looking at. You don't know if, you know, hashtag grateful means they can now afford to pay um, <laughs> this exorbitant uh, insurance for their child now because of this job. 
you know, hashtag grateful. That's what they're grateful for. And somebody may on the other side may see, well, oh, they're just bragging. Well, that's from your viewpoint because that's what you're looking at. They're looking at it from a different angle. They're looking at it from their own past or future or present. So give that a little bit of thought, guys. Give that a little bit of time in your cranium because that is huge. Ask yourself, and you can use this voice if you want. Hey, what are you looking at? Ask yourself, what are you looking at? Are you looking at the future? Are you looking at the past? Are you looking at right now being present with yourself, with your family, with your friends, with your business? What are you looking at? And that's what I want to leave you guys with today. Um, we'll do more. We'll go with, uh, into uh, more depth and detail as these things come along. I've got so many different things to share with you on the Mind Scrambler podcast, but this is what it's about. This is what mind scrambling, scrambling is all about, guys. It's about rearranging things in your brain. It's about rearranging things for you, for your success, giving you a different way of thinking about things, a different way of looking at life. And hopefully it will resonate with you and it will help you move forward one step at a time because that's how we're all moving forward. One step at a time until we can start to run and jog and then we can sprint. And then we buy a rocket car. Ha <laughs> ha! That's a good day. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to the Mind Scrambler podcast. I am Spike Spencer. I am signing off. Go have an extraordinary day. Adios. There you go, guys. A uh, woo hoo uh, Who is this? Followonbot.com. I'm over here on the chat. Let's get rid of that guy. Want to be famous? Let's see. I'm going to block him. How do I do that? Ban that user. Banned. Good. Get out of there. You need that guy. All right. So, uh, thank you, Jimmy. I appreciate that. Um... Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't use notes, really. I had a couple of little things written down, but when I got on the, the future past thing, I'm like, you know what, that's so much so powerful that I think that needs to be... Uh, I'm just going to stick with that because that needs to be ingrained in people's heads because it's such a big concept we don't realize that we're living in the past. I still do it. There's a lot of things I'm still getting rid of in my past, and things will pop up all the time. It's maintenance. You know, it's like something happens, uh, like... Like you've got a dirty floor and you clean that floor, you shine that floor, you wax that floor and you're like, that is great. Wait, what's that over there? That's some dirt. Well, how'd that get there? I don't know, but it's there. Well, let's get rid of it. Okay, sweet, 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 sweet. And you're like, okay, everything's fine. That uh, that floor is nice and clean. Oh, wait, there's a leaf over there. What the heck is that? Let, let's get rid of that leaf. Sweet, sweet, sweet. And then a big honking spider comes crawling across a... You know, that's how I roll. Unless I have a flamethrower, then it's just... Get thee behind me, arachnid. Uh, belt fluid. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> Came to me right in the present. Well, it's true. They, they all do. Um, I focus where I am. And it really doesn't matter that I'm, you know, looks like a place where I would hide bodies. <laughs> it's just... Ah, what's behind here? Um, it just matters that you receive the message. And as this podcast grows... <clears throat> there'll be more and more to talk about. And, um, you know, I, I just, I like bringing this information to you guys. This is, you know, this is what I'm trained for. This is what I study. Uh, when I'm reading books, like I'm still reading The, the Power of Your Subconscious Mind uh, by uh, Joseph Murphy. And I believe that's, uh, he's a, uh, he was a reverend. Uh, and the copy I have has so many freaking misspells. I know somebody you know, swiped it because I think it was public domain. If it is public domain, I will do an audiobook on it. Here's an idea, guys. So one of the things, uh, a couple of things I'm going to have, I, when I read books, I like to, I need to do a podcast on that. Yeah. Um, like when I read books, I like to walk in an infinity pattern because uh, oh, as you go in a circle, you're going to get dizzy. You walk in an infinity pattern, but it's also symbolic. And I hold the book up and I read out loud as if I'm speaking to other people. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, when I read, I if you just read, you are only going to get about 10% of it. But if you walk and speak and actively do something while you're 
uh, reading, you are going to retain more. You'll retain more, maybe 20, 30 uh, percent more. And, you know, being a voice actor, obviously, I'm warming up my voice for the day because do I'll do it in the morning. Um, I haven't been doing that a lot lately, but uh, I need to get back to that. Um, but anyway, so I would read them uh, out loud anyway. So I said, well, gosh, some of these books are in the public domain. So therefore, if I do my audio book, it's my recording, it's my product. So I sell it for like four four ninety nine. So I've done the science of getting rich and as a man thinketh, and um, you know I'm going to look into doing some other ones because I'm going to read them anyway. I'm not going to do it with like obviously the the ones that are out there now. Um, Kim is working on um, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza uh, becoming superhuman. That guy, wow! Uh, he's got a podcast. You need to listen to that as well. Uh, Joe Dispenza, D I S P E N Z A. He is a doctor. And he crushed his back for doing something. I don't remember what it was. It was an accident. And they said he was never going to walk again and probably wouldn't feel and be quadriplegic or something like that. And he said, no, that's not going to happen. He said, I'm going to heal it. And he did it. No drugs, no surgery, nothing. He healed it with his mind. And he proved he was right. Because our bodies can heal anything. It happens anyway. And this is such a great point that I'm going to do another podcast on this, is um, about forgiveness. Our body forgives us no matter what. Think about that for a second. You cut yourself, your body automatically starts to heal it. Period. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. That's what your body does. Cut, heal. It doesn't ask why you cut. Did you deserve to be cut? You know, should you have been cut? It doesn't matter. It automatically heals. And think about that in your relationships, in your life. Somebody does something bad to you. Well, you're automatically going to start healing your, yourself. You know, you're going to have, you're going to have your, your stages of depression and guilt and shame and uh, anger and all that sort of stuff. But you start the process immediately. And depending on what you do from there is how fast you're going to heal. You know, but the body's healing and the mind's healing. I healed my back with my mind. You know, I had my spine fused in 2004. I had pain up until about a year ago. Um, and then I read the book by uh, Dr. John Sarno, which I've recommended here. A couple of the books by Dr. John Sarno. It's really about mindset. And my back stopped hurting. Literally, I was just like, wait, what? My back doesn't hurt. Like right now, my back doesn't hurt. I'm starting to work out in the mornings, and I never do that because my back would always hurt in the mornings. I'm like, going, it takes me an hour to, to warm it up. I'd sit on a heating pad and kind of move slow. It's like, oh, it hurts, oh, it hurts. You know, I was always at a constant about five, level five pain. People say, how's your back? I'm like, it hurts. I'm like, now I'm like, it's great. It's freaking great. You know, let's go dance walk. If you haven't dance walked, you really should. So, hell message for reason. Oh, allow. Allow, allow. Spinal fusion is a biatch. Trying to avoid getting it done myself. Okay, Jimmy, get the book. Dr. John Sarno. Uh, Healing Back Pain. Read that and read Dr. Joe Dispenza. Both of those. Read those immediately. And focus on your back. Subconsciously work on it and you'll, you'll see. You'll see. Plus, I would also recommend The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. Um, that old book. You can get it for free, a PDF on, online. Just just Google it, and you'll find a PDF. Because um, I've been reading that, and I'm, I'm loving it. It's just, this old school stuff is brilliant. People are like going, well, we've got to think something else. We've got to get into the, the secret. The secret is, guys, the secret to the secret is there is no freaking secret. All right? It's not a secret. It's you got to work, you got to do things, and you do it with a mindset that it's already done. And you be grateful that it's already done. And then go to work. You know, and I'm learning from uh, um, the podcast I've been listening to religiously is uh, Jim Fortin. Now, Jim Fortin, F O R T I N, he is a, he's like the coach to the coaches, the big coaches. And he's mindset, he's NLP master, master, master. Uh, He's a master hypnotist, um, and he changes people like, like that and it's phenomenal and I've been listening to his stuff and I'm just like yeah a lot of the things that I've been hearing have not been resonating with me Um, you know for example um, 
like he talks about some some big people in the uh, you know self help space. They're going to tell you you know you got to take massive action, massive action, massive action. Okay, what if your action is wrong? What if it's crappy action? What if it's stupid action? And what if it's done from a bad space in your cranium, in your heart, and in your subconscious mind? Then is that really a good thing to be doing? Don't you need to get your mind first, get your mind right first, and then take action? And others are like you got to work your face off. You got to work until you you drop and bleed, and you know you get get your eight hours of sleep, and and then just grind, 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 grind. I'm like, you know what? I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like those ideas. You know, rise and grind. No, I want to rise and shine, baby. I want to rise and have a good time. I want to rise and and laugh and and have you know have some fun time with my baby boy, or you know hug my wife. I want to do wonderful things. I want to share. You know, ideas. These are the things that I want to do. Rise and grind. I don't know. I have issues with that. I'm like, and I get it. It's like, well, if you want to make millions of dollars, I'm like, well, do I? I mean, do I need to make millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars? You know, right now it's like, you know, give me 5K a month. And I'm like, okay, that's a good start. You know, but I'm in LA. So, you know, if you get 5K a month and like you're in, you know, San Antonio, like, you're doing freaking great. But yeah, I have big, huge dreams, and I know it's going to be avalanches of abundance, avalanches of money. That is coming. It is en route. It is already happening. You know, it's like something saying, like, you know, well, you look at your bank account. I don't have any money. Well, that's a statement. If you say, I don't have any money, your subconscious mind's going to go, okay, you don't have any money, and I'm going to show you that. Um, but if you say, I have all the money in the world... It's just not in my conscious existence right now. Ooh. So my wife did that with me, a, a reframe. I was working on a deal, a 64-unit apartment complex, uh, and I was like, I got the deal. I got it under contract, and I'm like, I don't have an investor. I have no money. How am I going to make this deal work? She goes, no, that, 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 that. She goes, no, no. You have an investor who's going to work perfectly for this deal. It's just not in your conscious awareness right now. And that investor showed up and became into my conscious awareness. And the deal was going to be the best deal I ever made in my life. But something sadly happened and it didn't quite work out. So I learned a lot. Um, but, you know, it wasn't supposed to be. It's just totally fine. So the people that bought it, I hope, you know, I wish them all the best in the world. And here's another thing to think about. When you're in the present, that deal fell through and I did a lot of research. That deal fell through. I, you know, these people kind of undercut us or it was just a time thing. You know, I did my best. So what I did was I didn't get angry and try to mess with the people who bought it. I sent them all my information. I said, hey, guys, I did a lot of work on this. And if this will help you help the people living there, then it's the highest and best good of everybody involved. Here's everything that I've done. Wish you all the best. I did that. Didn't get a thank you. Didn't get anything. I'm like, okay, that's fine. But I did the best that I could from a standpoint of giving, of support. So that's something you need to think about. You know, are you being supportive of yourself? Are you being supportive of your friends and family? Now that you understand the viewpoint, you know, what are you looking at? Well, ask yourself that when you see somebody doing something that you're like, that, I don't know if that action or that reaction that they have right now is commensurate with the situation. It doesn't seem right. It seems out of place. Well, a lot of times when people are acting from the past, it's a past hurt that they're reacting to because they were just triggered from that. And it had nothing to do with you, had nothing to do with the situation, you know, per se. It, it did have to do with how they're viewing it, how they're seeing, you know, the lens, uh, the, the viewfinder that they have is showing them something from the past. And so they're reacting to this situation in the present with old information. So think about that for a second. So that will give you a little more emotional intelligence, like I was saying, to, um, to view how somebody is, is reacting or how they're being and have a little more compassion, a little empathy, and say, oh, okay, I see what's happening there. And ask them. It's like, hey, I just wanted to, you know, ask you real quick. Your reaction there, I mean, don't do it in the moment because when somebody's in the moment, not the time. <clears throat> Give it a little time and then ask them, hey, you know, that reaction you just had, which was really um, kind of rough, how, why did you react that way? 
you know, how did you come to reach that reaction? What was it that you were thinking? And they'll try to come up with something and they can't really come up with something. You know, it's like, well, I, I just, I just felt bad. I, I just, it just pissed me off. Well, it didn't just piss you off. It pissed you off years ago. And now you're just using that as the trigger. So you're looking at the past and applying that to the now. So be careful with that. And, you know, you're doing it yourself. I do it. You know, we do it because it's, it's there. It's, it's ingrained in us. And that's what, you know, the work that we do with our coaches is, you know, let's dig that out. And that's what psychoanalysis uh, analysis and talk therapy, things of that nature, uh, they're doing it in a different way. They keep talking and talking and talking and talking, which I don't think works, but that's just me. I am not a medical professional and I'm not telling anybody to not get therapy or psychoanalysis or whatever they think they need from a licensed professional. Go get it if you think you need it. That's that's totally it. Um, it is my opinion only that I'm like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't buy it, you know, because you're putting people in the victim space you know, the whole time. You know, let's go back and let's really get into that. Let's go back to your trauma. Now let's sit in that trauma and stew for a while and tell me everything you feel. Well, I feel shitty. That's what, you know? So, um, yeah, I think there's there are other ways around it. And that's why I like timeline therapy so much. Uh, anyway, does anybody have any quick questions? I've got a couple minutes here and then uh, I'm out, people. I got things to do today. I got to go do some wheeling and dealing in the present. So, um... But yeah, that's about it, guys. So, I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. And uh, I enjoyed chitting, chatting with you guys. Uh, Jimmy, Red Nova. Who else uh, is here? It's Jimmy, hey, Red Nova, Tyrant. And it's just you two that are saying things here. we got some other people watching. But uh, happy to have you guys join the conversation anytime. Thank you guys for coming uh, to watch the show. And how I how I make the sausage behind the scenes here, and uh, it'll get better. It'll get much better. We're gonna have uh, better surroundings, uh, better visuals, but the podcast is gonna be audio anyway, so it doesn't matter. All right, guys, thank you so much for coming out. Go make this day absolutely phenomenal, uh, exciting, and positive for you. And uh, tell all your friends, please share. Uh, go over to YouTube uh, to see the other other episodes that I've been doing and tons of other videos, so many of them. Uh, feel free to go check those out. And as I get better with Twitch, there will be more coming and I'll make this show uh, much better and we'll all have a good time together. So see you later. Adios and I'm out.